Welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here, and I am so glad that you chose to join us in worship today. I know that God has something incredible in store for you and your family as you view this service today. So right now, Chapel Music is live in service. Let's jump on in there and get our worship on. Who is excited to worship God in this place this morning? Oh, that wasn't good enough. Who is excited to worship God in this place this morning? Come 
on, let's put our hands together. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this vagabond. And I've tried with all my might, and I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because he healed my what I see. I got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends, burning and bitterness. You can't just keep it moving. Nah, you ain't welcome here. Come on, let's sing this. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. They lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. They lost another one. I am free. I am free. Come on, if you believe that this morning, let's sing. They lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. They lost another one. I am free. Come on, let's sing it like we mean it this morning. Let 
means what he did for another. He can do it again. That means what he did for another. He can do it again. That means what he did for another. He can do it again. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. It's a spirit of prophecy. It's a spirit of prophecy. That means what he did for another. He can do it for you. That means what he did for another. He can do it for you. That means what he did for another. He can do it again. That means. this morning. That's going to require just a little bit of movement. If you can't dance, we will wobble with me. So let's sing this together this morning. Get up, 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 get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up. lift our hands in this place this morning.
part I would be remiss if I didn't do this right now if it is not well with your soul this morning there is a person who can fix everything that is going on in your life right now to make everything well that can be well everything that you didn't think could be done he can do and this morning all you've got to do is cry out the name of Jesus in this house just ask God to step into the situation that it is so he can make everything in your soul well this morning. 
that he can do everything that you didn't think could be done in your life this morning. That he would step into the atmosphere of the difference and that he can make a difference where you stand today. But Father God, we pray right now that you would step into our situations and that you would make our souls well. Father, right now I pray if there's anybody in this building, Lord, you know their heart. You know where they are right now, Lord, and as they're crying out to you and they're asking you into their hearts this morning, Lord, you're asking them to make their souls well, that they can live in eternity forever with you, Father God. I pray right now that you touch them. If they're watching online this morning, Lord, and they're not understanding what it is that they're feeling in their house this morning, that, Father, that you would step into that living room, that you would step into that car where they're listening this morning, Lord, and that you would press upon their hearts like never before to make it well with you, Father God. Father, we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. And amen. You all can be seated for just a moment. If this is your first time at the chapel, welcome home. If this is your first time watching online, welcome to the chapel. We're glad you chose to be here this morning. I can tell you, it gets harder and harder as the Spirit moves to get up here and just do the normal things that need to be done. It's not about the agendas and the list and the things that need to be checked off, but we want you to know that we're glad that you chose this morning to be in the house of the Lord. If you're not feeling at home what we're feeling in the house, I challenge you next week to show up. 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia. But as we transition into this next portion of our service, it's where we get to give. It's where we get to give back a portion of what God's given us back into the kingdom. Let me tell you the ways that you can give here at the chapel. If you're watching online, you can give via Cash App. That's money sign the chapel Jonesboro. Money sign the chapel Jonesboro. Or you can mail your tithes and offerings here to the church, 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia, 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia. If you're in-house, you can give in just a minute. Connection team member will be coming by with the buckets. Or at the end of service, we have the giving kiosk by the double doors where you can give to God. But before I pray this morning, I have a scripture. It is found in Exodus 34. And it's verse 4 and 5. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. I don't know about you, but we got to get out of the obligation aspect of what we do and be willing to give back because it's what we want to do. It's because what we have to do. Because we can't continue to do the things that we want to do in life if we're not willing to be obedient to what God has called us to do. We can't continue to see the world change. We can't see Clayton County changed if we're not willing to sacrifice and to do those things, bring that offering willingly. We don't stand up here and we don't beg y'all week after week. It's not what we're about. God's going to take care of the house because it's God's house. But he wants to know where you stand in the middle of this. He wants to know what are you willing to contribute? What are you willing to invest? Because this is an investment in his kingdom this morning. If you'll all stand, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for the presence that we feel in this place. And Father, I, I pray right now that you touch every person in this building and every person that is watching online. Father, that you would give them exactly what you've impressed upon their hearts to give this morning. Lord, let them be obedient to what it is that you have called them to do, to plant, to sow. Father, right now I just pray that you'd bless this offering above anything that we could ever imagine and that you have your way in the rest of the service. In Jesus' name.
and exalted high. And the train of his road filled the temple and the angels circled around. Let's sing this together, holy.
for I am unclean for my eyes they've seen Keep praising him in this place this morning. You know, David said, surely the Lord is in this place. Jeremiah removed his sandals from his feet. He said, for I'm standing on holy ground. For I'm standing on holy ground. And this morning, I don't believe God is quite done yet. I believe that as we have entered into his presence a few moments ago, we sang that song, It Is Well. It Is Well. And as you have entered into his presence, I want you to begin to ask yourself, Is it well? Is it well?
presence, God. God, that we have broken through man-made walls, obstacles, distractions this morning. And God, the veil that was rent from the top to the bottom, you have opened up a pathway that we have stepped into. And God, as we have entered into the Holy of Holies, God, I feel this morning that as every step that we have taken to enter into your presence, for every step that we took, there was a release in the Spirit taking place in each and every one of us. That some things that we were dragging along with us have now been released off of us. Some situations, some circumstances have been broken loose. God, I thank you this morning that not only have we entered into your presence, but God, we have entered into a peace that passes all understanding, that the anointing has broken your yoke today, that the anointing has set the captive free, that the anointing has brought a peace into the atmosphere of this building today. And that homes that are viewing right now online, anticipating this word to be spoken today, have already received something that they did not expect. But through the atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground that has been birthed today. And God, I thank you for that right now because God, you have opened us to a place as you opened up your place you have opened us up as well God I thank you for that today I thank you for what you have already done but God I thank you for what you're about to do in this place now every distraction every disturbance every agenda every individual that's battling something this morning I call that battle to cease right now I call that distraction to remove itself right now. I call down every stronghold, every sickness, every weakness, every need that it submit itself before the name of Jesus Christ today. And that a supernatural strength would come over each and every one of us today, here and at home, God. And God, I thank you for your presence in this place this morning. God, I thank you for your word. Now use me as your mouthpiece. Use me as I may bring glory unto your name, but release unto your people through your name. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Look around you at someone and tell them you haven't seen anything yet. Come on. Come on, step out. Tell them you haven't seen anything yet.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, we magnify your name this morning, God. God, you are worthy to be praised, to be exalted, Father. High above anything that we may set a front, God, that you are above that. And, and God, I thank you for that this morning. Oh, somebody praise him in this place. Come on, give him some glory in this house this morning. You know, it's amazing how God will, as the word says, he has directed our very steps. But it is amazing the, the things that he puts in those steps that if we're willing to open ourselves up, that we will receive something that we were not expecting. And I want to say this before we even get into the word this morning. There is healing that has already manifested itself in this house today. It is manifested. If you have a need of healing today, it has manifested itself inside of your body right now. You need to speak out unto the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. You see, uh, the word is great, but let me tell you something. When you're in the atmosphere of expectancy, God will come into that expectancy, and he will move upon it in a way. Let me tell you, you don't think you don't understand what I'm saying this morning. When they were in the boat and they traveled across and the seas began to rage, you see, the peace was in the bottom of that boat. The calmness was in the bottom of that boat. The everlasting love was in the bottom of that boat. And when he stepped out onto the bow of the ship and he said, peace, be still, peace, the waters had to submit itself. And there's something today that is in your life that has to submit itself because you're in the presence of the Lord today in this house. Mm. If you have your Bibles, your tablets, let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter 14, verses 7 through 20. Acts, chapter 14. You know, this is Super Bowl Sunday, but I want to call it Super Savior Sunday. Because God is in this house today. Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And verse 7 of Acts chapter 14. I like to say that many times because without fail, someone beside you will say, where is he at this morning? So uh, verse 7 of Acts 14. And they were preaching the gospel there. And in the stereo, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. Somebody say never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, and Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in a Laotian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men, and Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God, turn from these useless things, turn from these useless things to the living God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. You're about to enter into some fruitful seasons, filling our heart with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing them. And here it comes. Then the Jews from Antioch and Icom came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, 
he rose up and went into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. My title today is They Thought You Were Dead. They thought you were dead. They thought you had finally taken your last breath. They thought they had you right where they want you. Somebody this morning, the devil thinks he's got you right where he wants you. He's telling you that you're worthless. He's telling you to say what's the use. He's telling you to give up. But I got news for you today. You got somebody beside you that's willing to pick you up when you down. You got somebody with you today that's willing to say you got life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. You got a brother or a sister sitting beside you that says I'm not going to let you go down without a fight. And do I get a witness in this place today? Have I got a witness in this house today? Come on somebody today. I dare you to say the devil thought he had me down. But hallelujah. I'm up because I got somebody telling me this morning. Oh you feeling weak but God said you're strong this morning. Woo. And the Bible said, somebody say the Bible said. Because when I say the Bible said, that's not PD said. Do you get me this morning? And the Bible said that Paul fastened his eyes on the man. In other words, he was looking at him. And he yelled out at him. And when he yelled out at him and told him to get up and walk, he asked the man to do something that he had never done or had no reference of ever doing in his life. God, is God asking you to do something this morning? Has he been speaking to you? You see, it's one thing to ask a man to walk who has walked before, but it's a totally different thing to ask a man to walk who has never walked before, who does not know what it would be like, and doesn't have the coordination. You see, some folks can walk and they ain't got coordination anyway. No muscular dexterity at all. And you see, I can hear the man saying, you know, my nerve endings are not connected in my feet. I can hear the man saying, my ankles have never worked before. I can hear the man saying, you know, I'm not coordinated enough uh, in order for me to be able to walk. I can hear the man saying, "Uh, don't you know I've never walked from the time that I came out of my mother's womb? I was born broken. Can I get a witness? I was born broken. That means I can't take my, I can take my time and do what I need to do that means my broken is normal Mm. you see somebody this morning God's about to break your normal you've been laying down and God said I told you to get up and walk Oh, somebody this morning, you've been given uh, every excuse that you could to God, but God sent me by here to tell you today to get up on your feet and begin to walk. God told me to tell you to step out of what you've been stepping into. There's somebody here today, you've made every excuse in the world, but the prophet just told you, hallelujah, that today is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice, and I shall be glad. I dare, have I got three witnesses? I got two on that side but if I got somebody in this house today that's willing to say I'm getting up out of this thing I ain't laying in that casket any longer you ain't shutting the lid down on me today you ain't closing me Woo! you thought I was dead but I've got life and life more abundantly oh, oh God it means my broken is my normal Oh, it means I could keep going until I get. That means uh, my anger is normal. That means my alcoholism is normal. That means my malice is normal. And you're asking me to leap out of my normal. Hmm. You see, Paul challenged the man. He challenged the man to go beyond his experience and do something that he had never done before. He challenged him to leap on his feet. And you see, I know without a shadow of a doubt now after the worship we just experienced that the Lord sent me here today to tell somebody. I don't know who it is, but he's calling you to do something that you've never done before. 
But in order to do that, you cannot gradually do it. Oh, come on, somebody. We just want to slide in on the side. You can't do it one toe at a time. You can't stick one foot in and see if the water's all right and see if it'll hold you up. God says you're going to have to leap out of your normal. Oh, I wish somebody would leap up on their feet today. That's how you're going to come out of this thing. That's how you're going to come out of this thing. You got to leap up on your feet today. Oh, somebody, you got to open up the door and you got to leap up and say, you know what, God? I'm up today. Hallelujah. I feel like leaping in this house today. I feel like jumping in this house today. There's some of y'all that say, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. But let me tell you something. I can't, never could, but I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthened me. Woo! Oh, but I'm not in the shape you're in, and I ain't in the shape I'm in either. But I can do it because God said I could. Oh, you see, your friends are not going to understand it. Your family is not going to understand it. Your neighbors are not going to endorse it. But what God is going to do in your life, it is so quick. It is so sudden. It is so massive. It is so, oh, come on, comprehensive. It is so complete. It is so encompassing that you're getting ready to leap. Ooh. You know, I think about Elizabeth. And I think about John leaping in her womb. You see... John was so full of the Spirit of God that he was about to leap out before it was time to get out. Hello? Come on. <laughs> it's, uh, I got anybody pregnant this morning in this house. Y'all going to be pointing over that way. You know what denial is? Denial is the opportunity to have something that you don't think you can have. Ah! Woo, girl! And in the middle of being pregnant, there's something inside of you besides the baby that pushes you toward the mark. And you see, there's something inside of you besides the seed that is pushing you before the, before the mark to get to where you go. And you thought that something inside of you was dead, but God told me to tell you today that if you'll just reach down, oh, come on, and touch your spiritual belly just a little bit, what you thought was dead is alive again. What you thought would never be able to walk is walking again. Can I get a witness in this place today? What you thought was washed up and washed out, God said, I'm about to revive it in this house today. Woo! Oh, I'm so far from my notes, it's good. Ha. Mm. And you see, when they saw him, you see, there's always they hanging around. Ha. You see, bear in mind, they, 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 they're not Jews. They were not familiar with Jehovah. They were amazed. They experienced God, and they experienced Paul's ministry. But it's through the lens of their own theology. Here it is. I'm going to just lay it out for you this morning. You see, God had done it through Paul. But those who saw it or beheld it didn't know how to understand it. You know, it's kind of like people trying to figure us Pentecostal people out. They cannot figure us out. You know, one day we're a cult, and the next day they're calling us for prayer. Hello? Hello? One day we're speaking in tongues, and they say it's of the devil, but the next day they're asking us, would you pray in your prayer language? Because uh, evidently God's doing something in you that he's not doing in me. And you see, Paul was having one of those moments. The people around him uh, thought, well, he is our Greek God. He is, oh, po possibly he's Zeus. So oh, come on. And so they went and got some offering. Let me get on back on this thing. You see, their theology was built around Jupiter who was the king of the gods of, a, of the, the, the Palestinian, see, I can't get it, I'll get it out, society. That's in theology, if you've ever studied it, it's a difficult word, but it's uh, in Roman mythology. Jupiter, he's the same thing as the Greeks would call Zeus. Are you with me now? So they figured, well, maybe Barnabas is Jupiter, 
And they figured Paul must be Mercius. Paul told them, don't worship me. Paul said, we are men of like passions. And what did they do? They killed him. They killed him. They stoned him for being too much like them. Oh, that's not like church, don't it? They stoned him for being too much like him. And that's what happens in the church today. We kill people, do you hear me this morning, who get caught acting like us. Oh, ain't too many people shouting right now because when you kill somebody for having like passions, it throws the heat off of you. Do you hear? Because if you kill them, nobody would suspect you. But they had a little help. You see, I'm on my, I'm about midway through this thing, and that's the first time. They had a little bit of help because the Jews came down, and they talked to the men of Listeria, and they talked those men in the Listeria into killing Paul. And that very man, they didn't like Paul anyway. You see, they don't, people don't like you. You know, it doesn't bother me that people don't like me. If you could ever get that mindset, you'll find life a lot easier. Not everybody going to like you. Let me just, you want me to? Not everybody is going to like you. Look at somebody beside you and say, not everybody is going to like you. You want me to help you a little further? And not everybody is going to look like you. Oh, what do I need to say that? Y'all see this. Anybody know what that is? This was given to me from my godson, whose father is Kenyan by descent. And when they went to see his father's family in Kenya, what did Johnny do? And I hope he's watching today. Johnny brought this back for his godfather. Yes. A lot of times, y'all never even see me with this on, but I wear this a lot. Because not only does it remind me of who who gave it to me, but it reminds me of the heritage that it came from. Oh, help me somebody this morning. It reminds me of the heritage that it came from because I know that as a father, his father is anointed and appointed. I know the struggle that he had to get from Africa to here. I know that his father works for a multi-million dollar company that they fly him all over the United States. And he, he don't make little dollars. Do you hear what I'm telling you? But he came over here with barely clothes on his his back. Do you hear me this morning? But he decided, I'm not going to be what the clothes are on my back. I'm going to be what God had called me to be. And this man can preach like there ain't nobody's business. His name is John O'Mundi. Oh, but John O'Mundi Opala. Let me get it all out there this morning. I just want to lay it out because you see some of you are shortchanging yourself because you think you came from here. Some of you are shortchanging yourself because you think you're being held down. But I've come to tell you today, the only one that's holding you down is your This is in a time and in a season that we need to take control of it. Woo! And they didn't like Paul. They didn't like him. They didn't like him at all. That very man, they didn't like Paul anyway. You got that yet? But isn't it funny how many folks will hate you? They won't. It's kind of like they won't kill themselves. You don't hear me. Uh, they won't kill you their self. They'll, they'll get somebody else to do it. They'll get a posse. Anybody witnessing what I'm saying this morning? Oh, they'll try to slander you. Have you ever had that strange posse to rise up and try to take you out? And you didn't know where it came from, only to find out that it was one of your own that sent them? <laughs> so they were men of like passions. And what did they say? You got to kill them. So they took rocks and they stoned Paul with big rocks. They hit him in the head. They lacerated his skin, knocking him down to the ground. They stoned him, which was a custom amongst their people, kind of like they were going to stone the woman that was caught in adultery. Oh, someone here this morning, you see, we want to hit you with a rock because, you see, you've been caught with adultery. But can I tell you, some of the very men that were throwing the stones at that woman were some of the very men that had slept with her the night before. Do you hear me? They were trying to cover up what they had done been with. And you see, God, 
God will bring things to light because what does he say? That that is done in darkness shall be what? Shall be brought to light. And let me tell you something. When God puts light on your situation, you'll lay the stone down. Do you hear me this morning? When God begins to reflect his light on your circumstance, you'll put the stone down and you'll get on your knees and you'll say, God, help me not to be one of those people, God. God, help me not to walk in that form anymore, God. Help me, God, to go in the way in which I should go. And you see, I want to talk to some haters this morning. You got any haters? They're good at what they do. They know how to kill you with the right size. They know how to throw them stones. They know how to hide them in their hands. Oh, they've had experience at being a rock thrower. Hmm. And the Bible said that they threw rocks and supposed him to be dead. And this is where it gets good to me. They supposed him to be dead. You see, I realize about 50% of the church doesn't know what I'm talking about, so i got to preach to the other 50%. Is that all right? But have you ha ever had anybody willing to do anything to take you out? And they supposed you were dead. They supposed that you would never come back. They supposed that you would never get up. They supposed that you would never be nothing. Oh, I got some witnesses. Have you ever had anybody tell you, you can't be nothing without me? And they supposed you to be dead. And they left you in your trouble. And they left you in your debt. And they left you with the kids. And they left you with the bills. Oh, help me, Jesus. And they laughed and they went on to the strip club. Hallelujah. Oh, so he said it, didn't he? And they supposed you to be dead. Have you ever had any somebody to leave you and say well you think you can't cook you can't clean you can't iron oh come on you can't wash you can't make it without me and they say I'm going to expose you you see that's their rocks <laughs> I'm going to tell the people what a real bum you are and they're going to suppose you to be dead because all they've done is throw the stones at you hmm I want everybody that's ever been left for dead to give God about 10 seconds of praise in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. They said you were this. They said you'd never be that. They said you would never live to be 10. They said you would never be successful in life. They said you'd never get your children raised. They, they said you'll walk around sick the rest of your life. Oh, come on, somebody this morning. I dare you to praise them a little louder than that in this place today. If you got what I'm saying today, they said all this stuff about you, but look at where you at today. They said all these things about you, but look what God has done with you today. They said you would never rise up. They said you would never sing. They they said you would never graduate high school. They said you would never go to college. They said you would never be anything. But guess what? The devil is a liar. Woo! All oh, this, this done turned into a resurrection service, hasn't it? It ain't Easter, but we're about to get up in this place. We're about to, oh, well, let me give you some tips that are going to prepare you for what God's going to do next. Huh. It's going to hurt. Grab your seats. It's going to be PG. Sometimes you just got to lay there and let them think they won. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you a pathway. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to stop fighting and stop kicking and stop fussing and stop cussing and stop calling and stop yelling, stop texting, stop writing and display real still and act like you got me and just lay there with the blood running down on your forehead and act like, well, I'm just harmless. I don't have any more power. I don't have another message. I don't have anything to say. I can't get up so they can go on somewhere else. Oh, somebody this morning, because as soon as you shut up, they're going to leave you alone. Do you hear me this morning? As soon as you shut up, do you hear me this morning? Oh, your mouth might be actually fueling the fight. Hello. <laughs> you ever met that person going to get the last word on you? Huh? And you're the one that's going to get the last word on them? Maybe you just need to shut your mouth and let them say all the words and let them think they got you down with the stones that they throwed against you. But you see, what they don't realize, they might have stoned you. They might have thought they got you. But guess what they're going to think? When the next thing you know, oh, do you hear me this morning? They see you living better than you've ever lived before in your life. They see you looking better than you've ever looked before in your life. They see you walking around. Do you hear me this morning? I dare somebody this morning. There's a song. It's a rock song, Jonathan, just for you. And this is what 
what it said. It says, I love to watch it strut. Mm. Don't act like you ain't heard it. Some of y'all ain't. I know all the music. You see, and if you'll just be still and know that God is your God. And that God will fight your battles. And you don't have to defend your, oh God. You don't have to defend yourself, do you hear me? You don't have to defend yourself because the battles belong to God. Look at somebody and say, the battle belongs to God. And if you'll just be still and lay there, they will leave you for dead. Just because they left you for dead doesn't mean you're dead. Do you hear me this morning? I feel that resurrection spirit rising up again in this place. Look at somebody and say, it ain't over yet. They thought I was dead. It ain't over yet. Oh, I may be broke, hallelujah, but it ain't over yet. I may be sick right now, but it ain't over yet. I may be down right now, but it ain't over yet. My business might have closed the door, but it ain't over yet. As soon as y'all get out of my way, I'm getting back up again. You see, that's what you gotta do. You gotta get up from where you're at. You gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, come on. And this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna form a committee. The Bible says a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Oh, who's in your strand? Oh, who's in your strand? You see, maybe you've got a weak link in that strand. Maybe you, oh, come on, you, maybe you unequally yoked with a friend. You see, we want to use that as a husband. I'll use it as a husband. I'll use it as a, I'll go all the way around the corner this morning so I'm fair to everybody. Some of y'all got wives at home, and they ain't home right now. They out somewhere else. Some of y'all got husbands at home, and they ain't been a husband while they've been at home. You need to look at, oh, I'm not telling you to go home and break up the house. I'm telling you to go home and break up the monotony, the monotony and everything that's going on in the house. I'm telling you to speak to the mountain and the mountain shall be removed. You, if, if he ain't listening, anoint his head. If he ain't listening, anoint his shoes. If she's acting crazy, whoo! Pastor Lee, I, what was it he said? Wild Rhonda? Dirty Rhonda. Wednesday night. If you missed it, you need to get on there and watch it. If dirty David ain't going to act right, hope there ain't no Davids in here. If you are and you're dirty, you, the altar be open in a little bit. But if he ain't acting right, you need to do something about it. Get you a committee. Get a few people that will surround you and that will believe in you. And the Bible said the apostles, do you hear me this morning, surrounded himself with a few people that believed in him. And they made a circle around him on what they thought was dead. You see, this is the way nature works in incubation. You see, whenever nature gets ready to incubate something, it always puts it in an egg. It wraps it in a shell. And if you've been out there by yourself, God said, for the second half of your life, you need to surround yourself with some people that know it ain't over. Oh, come on with a few people that are wishing you well. A few people that can get a prayer through. A few people who are, are, are expecting a return. A few people who got the same mind and the same spirit. And there Paul was, laying, bleeding on the ground, looked dead, changing colors, getting cold. But because he surrounded himself, let me say it again. But because he surrounded himself, you got to get you a handful of people that can come into agreement. And oh, come on, somebody. Somebody. This is your year. I know it don't look like it because your head's bleeding. I know it don't feel like it because they've been throwing rocks at you ever since January started off. But I want to tell you today, I've already said it once, but the devil is a liar. You see, you thought January, well, it's going to be another one of them years. But honey, I come by to tell you, Monday, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. But let me tell you this, my God has already given you a Valentine like you ain't never seen in your life. He loved you so much that he said January was bad, but you ain't seen nothing in February. If you get yourself wrapped up with some people that have a like mind and a like belief and begin to bond and believe with them, he's about to break some things loose in your life. Oh, this is your year. Don't let the stones fool you. They rocked you. They stoned you. 
They scandalized you. They laughed at you. They left you, and now they're gone. But you, I want you to catch something here. It doesn't say that they bandaged to Paul up. It doesn't say that they poured wine up. I got a little longer in his wounds. It doesn't say that they set him on a horse and let him ride off. It says he stood up. I'm going off up here. It said he stood up. Oh, you don't hear me, do you? And, and here I, I said, my God, he ain't done nothing but he's reaping what he sowed. And God said, oh, come on. Oh, God, you, you make it happen for other people, God. Oh, come on, how many times have we said that? But God said, I'm going to make it happen for you. And he said, because you were raised up the lame man, because that's what went on. You were born lame. God said, I'm getting ready to raise you up. Who am I preaching to this morning? God said, I have not forgotten you this morning. Your kindness to other people and your day of vulnerability because you had the courage to make a lame man leap and I'm going to lift you up. You see, that's what he was saying to Paul. Paul, you got stoned. They hit you every which way. They left you out there for dead. But Paul, I recall you shouting out. I recall you were attentive enough. You had enough discernment to hear the man crying out from the side over there and you stopped the music and you said, Selah, stop the music. And you yelled out to the man that had never walked before, that the people beside him drug him up there, and they carried him up there. They know he couldn't walk. They know he was born that way. His best friend said, you've always been that way, and you'll always be that way. Paul told him to get up on his feet. And let me tell you something. The man just didn't get up. The man leaped up on his feet. Oh, a man that had never walked, didn't know what his legs were for, is now standing on something that he it never used. And God told me to tell you this morning, you're about to stand on something that you ain't never used before. Woo! Woo! Oh, that's some pork chops coming out. Oh. oh, he leaped on his feet and he started walking. And this is what got me. Oh, if I'd have been Paul, I'd have walked away from Listeria. But the Bible said he went right back into the place to let them know something. Paul walked right back into the town that just stoned him. And just like, oh, come on, I can feel it in my spirit. Just like he called out to the man that was lame. When he stepped through those gates, I could hear Paul hollering out, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I can hear Paul say, I'm a servant of the Most High God. I can hear Paul say, I'm a joint heir to the throne of God. I can hear Paul say, you may have done this to me, but guess what? I've come back inside because there's somebody else still in this town that needs to hear from the Lord. And Paul said, I'm coming in. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? It's time for somebody in this house today to knock on the devil's door and and say, guess what? I got the key to your door, but I gave you a courtesy knock so you can get out of my way. But I'm coming in to take back what you stole from me. I'm coming in to take my joy back. I'm coming in to take my peace back. I'm coming in to take my ministry back. I'm coming in to take my children back. I'm coming in to take my health back. I'm coming in to take my wealth back. I'm coming in to take my mind back. I'm coming in to take my heart back. I'm coming in to take my walk back. I'm coming in to take my looks back. I'm I'm coming in to take everything that you think you got in this house. I'm coming in here and I'm not repossessing. I'm possessing what you had of mine and I'm putting it back on me. There's somebody today, I dare you to straighten up your robe this morning. Woo! Woo! No weapon form. Somebody say it. Shall what? shall prosper. It won't work. Can I get a witness this morning? Somebody say it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word and he will come through. Oh, come on, somebody. I, somebody say it. I know God's going to do what he said he would do. Woo, he'll come through. Oh, but how? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, hold it right there a minute, all right? I'm going to take another minute. I want to think about the weapons that's been thrown at us this year. Over the last 12 months, over the last 24 months, everybody's taken some blows and some hits. Everybody's had some scrapes. 
Everybody wanted you dead. They left you for dead. They wanted to drive you over the edge. They wanted to wear you completely down. But guess what? The Lord told me to tell you that everything that they threw against you, it won't work. It won't work. Think about it. It won't work. It just won't work. This, that, and the other. Oh, come on. Oh, you've been sitting up at night on the side of your bed, and you ain't got no sleep. Your mind has been upset. Your body's been in turmoil. You've been walking the floors at 3 o'clock in the morning. But the Lord told me to tell somebody this morning, you need to say to that spirit, it isn't going to work on me anymore. Oh, come on, honey. You may sleep through the Super Bowl today. When you leave this place today, God said, he that has his mind on me and him shall I keep in perfect peace. And there's someone here this morning, your peace has been disrupted by the whispering that's been coming into your ear. But let me tell you something, honey. The devil talks on the left side because the authority is on the right side and I want to tell somebody this morning what he's been whispering in your left ear ain't what your right ear is hearing and somebody today you need to clean that spiritual wax out and say oh I hear the wind of blowing in this house today I hear the presence of God blowing in this house today I don't care how lonely you've been God said I've seen you laying in your bed crying at night I've seen you crying on your pillow in the middle of the night thinking that you can't make it, that you can't get up, that your battles are too big for you, that the, all of these things are going on. But he said you need to begin to proclaim this morning that the devil is a liar. Oh, have I got a witness in this place today? You want to be renewed right now? You got to leap up in this place and you got to say the devil is a liar. The angels of the Lord encamp about those that fear him. No weapon sent against you is going to work in this house. You want to be renewed because you, oh, come on, you made other people leap in your life but you ain't been leaping and let me tell you why it is it's because you've exhausted yourself but God said I'm resurrecting you this morning Woo. I got a little more preach left in me he said if you'll leap so far into your destiny that you can confront your haters and smile at them <laughs> oh, he said you can confront them lift your hands up in this place Open your mouth and fill this room full of praise right now. Fill it full of praise right now. Let me tell you, when we got into worship, I felt the Holy Ghost. Woo! I felt him say, them doors is not my problem. I'm coming into this house. And as you begin to fill this place with praise right now, he'll begin to enter into your problem. He'll begin to enter into your situation. Oh, come on. You see, when you lift your hands up, that's a sign of surrender. But I want to tell it to you this way. When you lift your hands up, that's a sign of availability for his ability. And he's telling somebody this morning, lift them up and call unto my name. Cry out the name of Jesus today. Oh, he's coming I hear him in this place today. Yeah. Oh, he that is weary and well-doing. He that is wavering. He that is teeter-totting in his faith. I shall strengthen him. I shall raise them up as the phoenix has risen out of the ashes, so shall you. To the one that's grown weary and well-doing, God says, well done, thy faithful son. Oh, oh, we want to hear that to get into heaven, but God says, well done, thy faithful son. Enter in. He's telling you to enter in right now in this place. Right now in this place. He's telling you. He's telling you to step. Come on, get on your feet in this building. Oh, come on. People are saying it won't work, and God said it's going to work. All oh, the anointing is in this place. The Spirit of God is uh, someone viewing this morning. He's in your house today. He's sitting beside you in your living room today. you got a whole list of things that you're struggling with. You've been stoned one after the other. One after the other. It just ain't one. Oh, come on. But it's not going to work. I want you to step into an attitude of gratitude this morning. I'm going to go ahead and open up these altars. I don't want to tell you something. God's not through with you yet. God's not through with you yet. It's not over with yet. You've, uh, you feel like that the, the, the match, they counted 10 and everything is done. You've been pinned and you don't know which way to go. 
But God told me to tell you this morning, it's not over with. It's not over with. It's not finished. He taught our honorable soul. It's not done. It's not done. You see, this is the thing that amazes me about the devil. He thinks he's got you down and dead. But you see, he don't know anything about life. Because I'm pretty sure my scripture tells me that he would give you life, not the devil. Jesus would give you life and life more abundantly. And you see, there in your lack of laying there, and the devil thinks he's got you down. He's telling you it's over with. What's the use? Give up. I'm telling you today, get up. Get up. You know, they sing that song, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. God's telling somebody to get up this morning. He's telling you this morning, you buried yourself. You put yourself in this place. But I'm getting you out of it. I'm getting you out of it. Hmm. He's speaking to your emotions today. He's speaking to your circumstances today. But you see, here it is. This is the thing that we don't understand. God can speak to you and your situations all day long. But until there's a response, there is no change. Until there's a response, there is no change. A lot of us want to get before God and we want to argue the solution. Okay, God. I like what Pastor Saber says. She says we want to negotiate. Mm -mm. God will let you have your way. He'll let you, he'll let you decide your own will. He'll let you do it. But you know what I love about God? He doesn't leave you there. He doesn't walk away from you. You just walk away from Him. There's someone here this morning, if you'll bow your heads just a second. I want you to think about what I've said in this building today. Some of you found yourself in the position of Paul. You went in doing great things. You went in and everything was good. And then all of a sudden, your life got like a ball of yarn. You know, I'm amazed that Candace Lamb, she does the knitting. And I'm amazed that she can keep that yarn all in one place. But you know, there's a time that when you pull just that one string that everything comes undone. And you're faced with the decision, do I sit here and unravel it or do I just cut it and start? And there's someone today, you're trying to unravel your mess. And God's telling you, you need to cut the cord. You need to cut it. If you're going to birth what he has for you. You see, I love it. Tay said, I'm pregnant. I love it. But you know, when she has that child, she's not going to walk around, Brandon, with that child still hooked to the umbilical cord after it's born. She's not going to, you know how that process works, don't you? Don't find out for a long time, okay? Long, long time. I speak that over you today. Over you today. But when the birthing process takes place, and all of that, that, oh, man, I don't know how y'all do it. But after they got all that other stuff, you know, the baby out, first thing they do before the other stuff comes out is they cut the cord. Put a little clip on the end of it. And they lay that child up on you. And oh, your heart. Oh, your heart. That's what Jesus is wanting this morning. He said, when I was hanging on the cross, I clipped the cord, but not the connection. You see, permissive, passive will, there's two different things things there that oh help me Jesus perfect will I could go on and on but some of you are just wanting just to lay 
right there and you're doing your best to tie that cord back and he's saying I cut it loose now I need you to walk I need you to walk because with every you're saying I've never done that before you see that lame man I, I, I cannot find I looked through every version that I could find of the Bible I cannot find one time that he disputed what he was told to do one time can I not find it where he stood up and said you know sir I've not ever walked before Sir, you don't, I bet I was born this way. I cannot find one time where he offered up any excuse. What I can find is where he offered up a response. He leaped up and he said, I'm not staying this way any longer. Today's my day. So as these altars are open this morning, today's your day. We'll pray with you, but I believe this is an intimate setting this morning. And I believe that there's any agent of change that takes place in your life, you have to initiate it. You have to initiate it. It's not shame when you come down here. Let me tell you something. There's not a day that I don't get up that I don't go to my altar. And I find myself before the Lord. Because you see, I'd rather find myself in this place. I'd rather find myself like this than I would find myself with a haughty spirit or an attitude that's not of God or disposition that doesn't display Him at all. And it's easy to do that. It's easy to get into that spot where we say we got it all figured out. I'll call you God when I need you. And God said, no, 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 no. I need you to talk to me on a regular basis. You see, God doesn't need us. We need him. Jesus didn't have to lay his life down for us. But he did. Because he knew that you would be in the chapel this morning. He knew that you would be here this day. Your agent of change is in your response to the call. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this morning for our morning worship. We know God impacted your life in a great way. If you enjoyed this service, share this stream to all of your family and friends. And we'll catch you next time here at the Chapel Jonesboro.